Hello everyone. On this video, I'm going to talk about the components of the gait cycle, of a walking gait cycle. We'll talk about running in the next video. Okay, so the gait cycle is divided into stance and swing phases. So stance phase is what we call it when the foot is on the ground, uh, goes from heel strike until the foot is lifted and becomes airborne again. And stance time is the length of time that the foot is in stance phase. Swing phase, the phase where uh, the foot is off the ground when the foot becomes airborne until the next heel strike. And swing time is the time spent in that swing phase. Um, so I want to clarify that we can define the stance and swing phases per leg. Okay, so like if we're looking at this picture here, I can't just look at the picture all the way on the left side and say, okay, that's, um, they're in stance or they're in swing um, because it depends on the leg. You know, as you look through, you'll see in some pictures, one leg is blue, or sorry, the right leg is blue, the left leg is green. And in some of these phases, as we look across, um, some are in, like the right is in stance and the left is in swing and then vice versa. And then sometimes they're both in stance. Okay, so when we say like, um, name the phase of the gait cycle, the question should be of, on the left or the right side, uh, because we'd have two phases. Like if I pointed to any of these pictures, you would have to name two phases there, depending on whether it's the left or the right. So I just wanna clarify that, that we always need to be specific about left or right, um, because the limbs are doing opposite things throughout the gait cycle. All right, so double and single support. Um, double support happens when both feet are on the ground. Okay, so twice during a walking gait cycle, we have a stretch of time where both feet are on the ground at the same time. Um, double support time is the amount of time spent in double support. And then single support is when only one foot is in contact with the ground. So then the other would be in swing. Okay, so single support, one leg is supporting the body and the other is in swing. Double support is when we have two feet on the ground at the same time. Single support time, the amount of time spent in single support. All right, so during a walking gait cycle, about 60% is stance phase and about 40% is swing phase. And again, like I mentioned a moment ago, um, both feet are in stance at the same time. So we have double support twice during the gait cycle. So if we look at this picture up here, you see all the way on the left at the beginning of the cycle, and then kind of in the middle, uh, where we're switching between feet, we have double support where both feet are touching the ground. And then in between, we have single support where we have one leg on the ground and one swinging. Um, so because um, our stance overlaps between left and right in two places, that's why we have a greater amount of stance than we do swing in the total gait cycle. So uh, swing phase, we divide into three distinct phases within the whole swing phase. It includes initial swing, which we also refer to as acceleration. So it's like where the leg is getting started and accelerating through swing, mid swing in the middle, and then terminal swing, or also called deceleration at the end of swing where we're trying to decelerate the limb so that we can land with control. Um, then the stance phase is divided into five segments. So that includes heel strike, which is also referred to as initial contact, Foot flat, also referred to as loading response. Mid stance, heel off, also called terminal stance, and toe off, also called pre-swing. Um, so we're gonna go through and talk about each of these eight phases individually. Okay, so starting with heel strike. Uh, heel strike is the very beginning. This is where we define our gait cycle. It starts at heel strike, whether we look at the right or the left. Uh, so when the heel makes contact with the ground, beginning the stance phase. And again, that's on that leg. Um, so like in this picture on the left, on the right limb, that's heel strike, and that's where we're starting the gait cycle. But meanwhile, the left leg is doing something else. And we'll, we'll talk through all the phases, so we'll see that in a minute. Okay, so the right limb in this picture is heel strike. 
So the heel is making contact. Um, so at the end of swing phase, now the heel makes contact with the ground and then we're gonna start to bear weight. That's foot flat. So that's where after heel strike, we're starting to shift our weight onto that limb. Um, so we're shifting onto that stance leg and the foot is flat on the ground. Um, so in this picture where it says toe off left, meanwhile on the right side it's foot flat even though it doesn't say that. Um, what I want you to notice here is that the right leg is a little bit in front of the body. Okay, so it's not the center of mass of the whole body isn't fully shifted onto that limb yet. So the foot is flat and it's beginning to be weight bearing, but it's not fully all the way on top yet. That's the next phase. So mid stance, now you can see in the picture where the whole body is lined up right on top of that limb. So center of gravity passes over the weight bearing foot as the talocurl joint moves into a dorsiflex position. So we went from heel strike to some plantar flexion as we're starting to move the body weight onto that limb. Now we're going from that flat foot into more dorsiflexion as we move to neutral and the uh, center of gravity is moving on top of that limb. Okay, and then we keep moving through that. So now the center of gravity of the whole body is now in front of that limb, of that right leg, and that's where we get to heel off. So now we've really got to get into dorsiflexion so much so that the heel is coming up off uh, the ground. Okay, so the heel lifts off the floor and heel off. It's exactly what it sounds like. Um, then we keep moving forward and we get to toe off. So the foot lifts from the ground to begin the swing phase. So toe off is technically our fifth stage of the stance phase, um, but it's what marks the, the boundary between stance and swing. Okay, so it's technically part of stance where the toe is just barely touching the ground and then it lifts and now we are officially in swing. Okay, so then we're in the swing phase and we first have initial swing or acceleration. Uh, it's the first segment of the swing phase in which the leg and foot catch up to the body. Okay, so we go from toe off where the limb is behind you, your toes lift off the ground, and that first part of swing where the limb is catching up to be neutral with the body, so that first section until neutral is initial swing. Then mid swing is once we get to neutral and the limb is passing the body. Okay, so it's initial swing when the limb is behind the body, mid swing, midway through the swing as it passes the stance leg, and then terminal swing is the remainder of the swing phase um, once the limb is in front of the stance leg. Um, so in terminal swing, it involves the slowing of the limb to prepare for heel strike, which is why it's also referred to as the deceleration phase. Okay, so in acceleration, we have to produce enough force to get some momentum behind that leg and swing it through all the way, you know, however many feet in front of us, depending on the speed of gait that we're, we're in right now. Um, so we have to accelerate the leg and propel it through. Um, and then in the terminal portion of the swing phase, now we have to decelerate and control that limb uh, because we can't just fling our legs forward for every step. We have to carefully control where and how we land to avoid injury and improve performance and, and so on. All right, so during walking gait, the pelvis is doing a lot. Okay, so pelvis during walking gait uh, needs to be able to move in all three planes. So it needs to be able to go front, back, up and down, and side to side. Okay, so we need to have triaxial movement of the pelvis during walking gait. If we're restricted in any of those three planes, then that's hypomobility. We would have to make up for that with hypermobility above or below that level. So that's where we'd have hypermobility um, in the knees, the ankles, the spine to make up for the restricted movement in the pelvis. Um, so when we do posture and gait assessment, it's really important to look at what the pelvis is doing because sometimes that can answer a lot of questions for us about uh, why someone might have pain or abnormal movement at some other link in the body. 
Okay, so the left and right pelvic bones move inferiorly and superiorly opposite one another during stance and swing phases. So on the left and right, they're going up and down like this alternately depending on what phase each limb is in. Um, so we get the most anterior, the pelvis is, or sorry, not anterior, we get the most superior, the pelvis is in the highest position during mid stance. So on the stance leg, as the center of gravity is passing over the stance leg, the pelvis is in the highest position on that side, um, and then lowest during heel strike. So the opposite side pelvis is going to be a little bit lower at that point, and then that swing leg is going to swing through and get to its lowest or most inferior point at heel strike. Now we don't want the pelvis on the swing side to be much lower during mid swing. Um, and if it is, it would be pelvic drop, which we'll get to when we talk about gait distortions. Okay, so pelvic drop, we don't want the pelvis to drop while, that, um, while the pelvis is in its highest point at mid stance. We don't want the other side to drop too low. That's not good. That would be a weak um, gluteus medius on the stance side. Um, so we don't want it to get too low, but it should get lowest, its lowest point at heel strike when the limb is in front of the body. The pelvis shifts laterally during stance. So think about that. Like if we put our leg down and we're trying to shift our body weight to our stance leg, it makes sense that we would have to shift the, the pelvis and shift the body laterally so that our center of gravity is on top of the stance leg to support us while the other leg is in swing. Uh, the greatest lateral shift occurs during mid stance. Okay, so during mid stance, the pelvis on that stance side is going to be at, at its highest and mo shifted most lateral in the stance direction. The left and right pelvic bones move anteriorly and posteriorly opposite one another during stance and swing phases. So the whole pelvis as a unit is going anterior, posterior, anterior, posterior as the limbs are moving in the anterior and posterior direction. Uh, the pelvic bone rotates the farthest anteriorly when the limb is on the same side as in the front during terminal swing and heel strike. Okay, so during terminal swing and heel strike, that is when the pelvis on that side will be the most anterior and when it will be the most inferior. Okay, that is all I have for you for this one today, and I'll see you for the next one.